Whether you have children or you're simply a picky eater yourself, a nutritious diet can be made approachable. First, what is a nutritious diet? The premise of nutrient density lies in quality animal foods. If meat, fish, eggs, and dairy are raised in a proper environment, the grass or forage the animal is consuming will translate directly to the finished animal product that you are consuming. A lot of the time, these foods aren't necessarily the most approachable. Not every kid wants to have a steak every night for dinner or a can of anchovies for lunch. So let's start with what I prepare for my sister. And for those of you that don't know, I cook for my sister every single day, breakfast, lunch, snack, and dinner. And she is a very picky eater. So everything I make has to taste good. Uh, these foods that we're going to go over uh, is actually a similar eating plan to how she lost over 50 pounds. Uh, she is four foot 11 and she used to weigh 155. Uh, now she's down to about 100 pounds. So by increasing the nutrient density of her diet and switching to an animal-based diet, uh, I was able to help her lose all of that excess body fat and essentially go from obese uh, to an average body mass. And she didn't lose the weight until we increased the nutrient density. Uh, conventional raised stuff did not work in this case. Uh, for breakfast, uh, she's been having eggs, very approachable, very tasty, yet can be nutrient dense if executed correctly. By using pasture raised eggs from a local farm, the vitamin and mineral content of the eggs is substantially higher and the omega-3 to omega-6 ratio is better. I make sure to also use the highest quality raw grass-fed butter for a higher vitamin content as well. Uh, in these eggs, I actually added some beef bacon uh, for the extra protein. If you have a picky eater that doesn't like eating meat, then sneaking bacon into some eggs works really well. Uh, beef bacon has a better omega-3 to omega-6 ratio if you don't have access to pasture-raised uh, pork bacon. I also added some raw cheese to this. Uh, cheese, as with butter, is high in fat-soluble vitamins if it's high quality. Uh, I used Pecorino Romano here, and cheese tends to make eggs even tastier. And who doesn't like a bacon, egg, and cheese for breakfast? Speaking of bacon, egg, and cheese, this is where we have to understand that it is okay to use foods that aren't necessarily nutrient dense or good for you as a delivery method for said nutrient dense foods. This could be a piece of bread uh, for that bacon, egg, and cheese, maybe some ketchup, or it could be a glass of freshly squeezed orange juice in the morning. In ideal circumstances, that bread is something you made yourself from heirloom grains. Worst case scenario, that bread is maybe your local organic sprouted sourdough. Obviously, you don't want Tropicana orange juice or Wonder Bread. Uh, these foods have modern concerns. You know, the type of wheat used is hybridized. Uh, there's pesticides and herbicides sprayed on most conventionally grown oranges. But as long as there's a base of nutrient density in the diet, that is the priority here. Deviating and cheating from time to time isn't the end of the world. One thing you definitely have to consider is, yes, these eggs are super healthy, but they are also expensive. So you're not going to see me putting these eggs on a Thomas English muffin. That would be completely ridiculous. You're consuming hybridized wheat, dozens of chemicals, oxidized soybean oil in a Thomas English muffin, why would you put so much effort and money into making such a beautiful healthy product like this and then put it on a Thomas English muffin? That being said, it is better to have these eggs on a Thomas English muffin than not have them at all. Uh, for lunch, I've been giving my sister uh, deli meats from a local farm. I don't think you can actually get high quality deli meat in a local supermarket without breaking the bank. Uh, when I purchase pasture raised pork ham or bologna that's raised in the right way, I know that it's going to have a good nutrient content and ideal omega fatty acid ratios, and it's going to be free of any negative agrochemicals, herbicides, pesticides, atrazine. All of the conventional meat that you see in the supermarket is not conducive to health. Regardless of whether it's beef, pork, or chicken, half a pound of roast beef once in a while isn't gonna kill you, but I wouldn't eat it on a daily basis, and I certainly wouldn't feed it to my children on a daily basis. 
uh, with all of these chemical concerns in feedlot agriculture. Usually, you can find wild fish uh, like smoked trout or salmon in any local supermarket, but most kids, you know, to my imagination, would not be a fan of eating fish, uh, but it is something to consider. Uh, this is a, like a very smoky, uh, salted ham, so very approachable. My sister loves this stuff. And this actually leads us to an option that you can find in a local supermarket, uh, that being cheese. And regardless of what supermarket I've been in, I've always been able to find a raw, high quality cheese. This is because cheese is viewed as an artisanal product and it is made according to certain standards and regulations. Yes, there is plenty of cheap, crappy cheese, whether it's Baby Bell or Kraft Singles, but even common cheeses like Parmigiano Reggiano or Pecorino Romano are actually what I consider a health food, a high quality, nutrient dense animal food. Any dairy product is high in nutrients. Granted, the animal was foraging on grass and the milk is not extensively heated in pasteurization, which can reduce the nutrient content and remove the beneficial bacteria. Uh, what I have here for my sister is a raw sheep Roquefort, uh, a blue cheese, and my sister loves eating this stuff on its own. Uh, you can give your kids vegetables like carrots or celery uh, to eat with cheese, uh, maybe some nuts. Uh, sometimes I actually make a liver pate uh, that she dips the cheese in. You can even drizzle some honey on the cheese. I've never met someone that doesn't like honey on a piece of animal fat, let alone cheese. And depending on your local selection, you might be fairly limited to only a few raw cheeses, but you absolutely want the cheese to be raw and ideally on pasture. That can be found out by just Googling the cheese and where it's from. Uh, you'll be met with a bunch of information on you know, what the regulations are around making that cheese. And one of those will tell you if it was on pasture or if they're allowed to feed the animal grains. Cheese is very approachable, very tasty, as are dairy products in general. The problem is that dairy products besides cheese are fairly difficult to get your hands on in a raw and grass-fed state. If you don't have access to raw milk, butter, cream, yogurt, sour cream, whatever it may be, it's safe to say that there really isn't a more nutrient dense or approachable food than raw dairy. A glass of milk in the morning with a bacon, egg, and cheese, some yogurt with maple syrup as a snack, blue cheese crumbled on your steak, berries with cream for dessert, you get the picture. I don't want to focus too much on raw dairy as I know many people don't have access to it, but hopefully in the near future, I will be able to provide you guys with raw dairy. And the idea of eating ice cream and drinking milkshakes seems much more enjoyable than choking down some raw liver. Another reason to appreciate dairy products like cheese so much is because they don't require any prep. Same with things like chocolate. So I actually have some raw cacao butter uh, that my sister can have as a snack if she wants. Any decent quality organic raw cacao is great. Uh, my business partner Adam actually feeds his toddlers salmon roe and they absolutely love it. Uh, one time I was over his apartment and you know he gave his little kid a, a spoonful of salmon roe and the kid literally went like this after eating the salmon roe. So, uh, something that might not seem approachable like caviar, like fish eggs, is actually very approachable to a child because what they actually care about is the texture and consistency and they really like fatty and cholesterol rich foods. Uh, so whether it's a bag of chocolate in the cabinet, a container of caviar in the fridge, deli meats in a container, all of these foods are easily accessible and don't require any time to get them ready. Uh, for dinner, I made my sister uh, pizza burgers uh, with raw mozzarella cheese and a tomato sauce made with local heirloom tomatoes. Usually I have a hard time getting my sister to eat an actual piece of meat like a steak. Uh, so for dinner, she usually has hot dogs or a cheeseburger. Uh, sometimes I'll get her a sweet Italian sausage. Uh, I've made bacon wrapped meatballs really just trying to disguise a protein into something more approachable. And guys, this is absolutely delicious. Uh, it's something to be said about 
all high quality ingredients. You can have really deep and complex flavors in every single element of this dish, whether it's the nutty grass fed beef, uh, the complex mozzarella cheese, the sweet ripe heirloom tomatoes. Quality goes a long way here. And this kind of goes back uh, to the discussion we had earlier. Uh, you know, it's not the end of the world if you have a burger bun, but always consider the food quality. If you ever have a question about whether a food is nutrient dense or not, just ask yourself, is it a quality animal food? If you're wondering if a food is bad for you, then think of the origin of the food. Is it something we could replicate in the wild? Judging the quality of plant foods, whether it's a piece of fruit, a sweet potato, a bag of rice, is very subjective and can get incredibly detailed. But what's consistent is that these high quality plant foods generally cost more than high quality animal foods from a caloric perspective. I'm not going to pay $4 a pound for organic rye flour and then spend five hours making naturally fermented sourdough if I can just have half a gallon of raw milk for the same price and much less time invested. You know, there's nothing wrong with adding quality plant foods to your diet. It's just in our modern context and food availability, it, you can pretty much get animal foods for the same price that are of the same, if not higher quality. So thank you guys for joining me. Hopefully this has given you some approachable, easy, nutritious meal ideas. If you guys have any further questions or any good ideas, uh, just leave them down in the comments below. Definitely check out frankiesfreerangemeat.com, high quality, nutrient dense animal foods at an affordable price. We just launched a local grass-fed beef box in limited quantity. So if you want over 17 pounds of local fatty grass-fed beef delivered straight to your door, go to frankiesfreerangemeat.com and check that out. You can also go to frankiesnaturals.com, minimal ingredients, minimally processed hygiene and cosmetic products. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, we really want to do raw dairy, uh, hopefully within the year for you guys. Uh, so the more support we get, the sooner we can make things like that happen. Thanks again for joining me and enjoy the rest of your day.